the more bacterial level of the lab, things are getting, well, groovy. So basically, this is an OCAS assay, and it's a way that we can test bacteria for the production of these things called siderophores. So don't let the name scare you off. They're basically just these small organic molecules that bacteria or some bacteria can secrete in order to grab onto, or we say chelate, metals. And so bacteria often produce these in response to low iron conditions because they're able to secrete these siderophores that grab onto the iron and therefore take it into the bacteria so the bacteria can use it. Now bacteria can also produce siderophores that can kind of just like remove heavy metals from the environment around them to protect themselves. And in the process, they're going to protect the plants and stuff around them. So siderophores can be really helpful in terms of promoting plant growth. There are also some like pathogens that secrete pet their, um, siderophores um, for various reasons. Not gonna go into that. We're looking at the friendly bacteria and we want to figure out how can we find bacteria that are able to reduce metals from the environment. So like bioremediation of metals, clean up environments, promote plant um, growth. And so we're straining different bacteria that we know can do things like reduce chromium. And now we're trying to figure out, well, what else can they do? And which of these strains is kind of best? And how do they do it? And all these things. So speaking of how do they do it, how does this assay work? Basically, the color change that we see, the kind of like the blue going to light yellow, that's basically telling us, so this is in the presence of iron and in the absence of iron. So you see that in the absence of iron, you get this like yellowy stuff. Well, at least the bacteria were grown in the absence of iron, and then we added iron in complex with a dye called Cas. This gets us to the idea of an OCAS assay. So the O stands for overlay, and then Cas is this chrome azurol S, which is this dye that in the presence of um, hexadethyl trimethyl ammonium bromine, eh, basically this HDTMA. Um, this is a chemical, it's a detergent, so like an artificial soap, that forms a complex with the dye and with iron. So we mix iron chloride with the Cas and the HDTMA, and we get this dye solution that we autoclaved. So basically, you get that complex of the dye, of the, of the iron, and of this HGTMA. And that looks the blue. So if you actually just look at the, dye, the cast dye itself, it's not going to look blue. But when it forms a complex with the iron, it does. The dye itself is kind of like reddish. Um, but it forms this blue complex. And therefore, it needs the iron to do that. If you take away the iron out of that complex, you get the color change. So what you're seeing here is the bacteria basically making siderophores that are taking the iron out of that complex and therefore changing the color of the media. So the overlay part. Basically, we grew these bacteria on normal agarose plates. Uh, well, some of them we deferrated more in a minute. Um, but then on, once they grown, we get this like the bacteria growing. Then we add this overlay where we add that dye mixture in order to kind of get it to like solidify and be a gel and stuff and be the right pH, we used a combination of pipes, which is a pH buffer um, and in a solution and put some agarose in it. So basically you have this kind of like when you're writing a PCR, you have that gel. We have a sort of gel here and we mix this with the dye. So you get that nice kind of gel containing the dye that you're able to overlay over the plates. And so that's where the O in the OCAS comes from. It's from this overlay because you're overlaying it over the bacteria that have already grown on the plates. There's a, like the ca traditional Cas agar dye. Um, basically you just grow the bacteria, like the dyes and stuff is in the plates already. Um, when the like bacteria are growing in the presence of it. But it turns out that some bacteria such as gram positive bacteria and we're working with bacillus species, more specifically Sophensis and Subtilis, um, basically this HGTMA can actually kind of like halt their growth because they, they don't like it. Um, and so basically, or I guess that's not it. That's the agros. They don't like this guy. And so basically by adding it in the overlay, you don't prevent the bacteria from growing. You just then spread this over the bacteria once they've grown. And then the bacteria are able to secrete stuff into that gel and steal the metal out of the, um, out of the dye. And therefore you're going to see the color change. 
So what you can see here, this is an example of a plate where we do not have, <clears throat> sorry, where we have iron. And then this is the same bacteria species, but when we take away the iron. So how do we take away the iron? Basically in the agar, in the agar part of it, the part with the, the media part, the part that we were growing the bacteria on, it was an LB agar plate. So basically it had the food for the bacteria. And well, what we did was we took some of it and we mixed it with this Kelex. Um, so Kelex is resin. When you see chelate, chela, remember we're talking about chelates being like things that can bind to metals. Basically this resin is an, um, it's a cation exchanger. And so it can bind onto metals like iron. And so we mix this. Um, so you see it's like this kind of like powdery stuff. We mix it with the media. We let it spin, sit, um, so like a stir bar in the flask with the media. Um, and that's going to basically, this resin then steals that. And then we can just filter it out and we get our deferrated media that then we can pour the plates for. And then our, our negative controls will be where we don't have um, we haven't removed that so we'll, even though we didn't like add iron to the media there could be iron present in the media well there's probably iron present in the media because bacteria need iron um and so that is going to then remove that iron we also did like uh we used dilute nitric acid to wash out the beaker or the glassware first um, to remove trace iron there probably still was some iron because we didn't like remove it from the agarose and all that stuff. Um, but you can see that at least for this one, we do see a difference between the plates telling us that basically the, in the absence of iron, these bacteria are producing siderophores. What was really interesting was that some of the bacteria seem to be producing siderophores even in the presence of iron. And so we're really, really curious about, well, one, is this acid even working? Are these siderophores that we're um, detecting? Is there something else going on? Do these bacteria just like always produce these? Would they be extra good at removing it from the environment? So these are all kind of like questions um, and things that we can address. What's cool too is that some of the species that we saw that were really good at reducing the chromium were also really good at making the siderophores. Um, and so it could be a way that they're using it. Um, and well, the color, basically based on the color, you're able to kind of, you should theoretically at least be getting enable a way to tell kind of like what kind of siderophore is being produced. So based on this OCAS paper, if it's like orange, it's supposed to be like hydroxamate and then like yellow carboxylate. So we're like, okay, well, we've got kind of like a orangey yellow. We're hoping it's carboxylate. There are variations that you can do to test the production of siderophores and the presence of, or absence of other things um, and kind of use sider complex siderophores with other metals. So we can see if the bacteria are able to produce siderophores that can actually remove the that the metals, those different metals from these complexes. So traditionally, siderophores are thought in terms of their iron, um, but they can also be removing other metals. Um, and so we're really, really interested in that and following up, um, doing this sorts of experiments with other things um, because it's really cool. Like, it's just, I really like this assay. It's like, I like when things are visual and it's just so pretty. So again, like this is the overlay cast, the OCAS method. Um, you grow the bacteria on like whatever plates they like to grow on. Um, so take some and remove the iron from them. Others keep, don't just treat as normal. And then that grow the bacteria on them. Once they've grown, go ahead and put this overlay over them. And remember the overlay is going to contain, um, it's going to have kind of the two parts that you'll make separately and then mix them together. So you'll have the dye part, which has the Cas, the chromazool S, it has the HETMA, which is our detergent, um, and it's got the iron chloride. And so together, those are going to form that complex. And it's this detergent that's that's been found to be like the most uh, troublesome in order in terms of growing bacteria, some bacteria in terms of like as far as what I've read. Um, and so I'll post links to some papers and stuff that we've been basing off of. Um, but that's that's what I was able to kind of like take away from it. You mix that dye with a solution of agarose and um, pipes. So this pH buffer at like pH 6.8. This is the solution. We took so long to get this um, and we finally got it. 
and then the bottle broke and it was so sad. But basically the pipes isn't gonna dissolve unless you have it to a higher pH. And so you kind of have to be like in this balance between add in NaOH and add in pipes. Cause as the pipes dissolves, it's going to lower the pH, but it won't dissolve until you're at a higher pH, but then you don't wanna overshoot the pH. So you start with like pellets of, P of NaOH and then you add liquid and yeah. So it's a long process. And then the bottle broke in the, um, heat warmer after so we took it out of the autoclave and we put it in the water bath to let it cool down to like 50 degrees and the whole bottom of the bottle fell off it was it was awful but anyway we remade it all was good we mixed it with our dye we put that over the plates so here we're using these like split these like divided plates so that we could do two bacteria on one um i'm a little worried there might be some spillover between a couple of them um but basically then we put five mils per side because the paper said to put like 10 mils but we had like half um but basically yeah so you just put it over the bacteria and then if the bacteria produce the siderophores they secrete them out um the color of the media changes so they said after like 15 minutes we saw much more dramatic effects if we waited longer so we just like stuck them back in the incubator overnight um and the effects were amplified um and yeah so hopefully we're doing everything right this is our first time doing it uh but we're just excited by the results we like the groovy colors and yeah so this is the overlay version there's also just put it in the put like you make the cast in the dye in the media that the bacteria grow on but that can prevent the growth of some things there are variations i've seen where you inc instead of hgtma you use a different detergent um there are also liquid versions um as well as further tests that you can do to try to chemically characterize the type of siderophore that's being produced. So we're hopefully, um, my other research student, Nicholas, so Roy's been doing this great work. Um, Nicholas is, we're gonna look at some like actual metabolites. So see whether various carboxylic, um, carboxylates are being secreted um, and made inside the cell and try to connect it all to malidehydrogenase. So we have some good hints, including from this assay, um, that malidehydrogenase might be involved. So stay tuned.